do that. Um, do that, please. Uh, do that, please. Um, there's a toy shop called Abacus. Um, it's a sort of educational toys and wooden toys, and they sell everything you might want. They sell board game boards with different little tracks and spots and things to put cards on. They sell blank cards that you can fill in and put on the thing. And they sell little spinners and clocks and numbers and dice of different sides. The six-sided dice, the eight-sided dice, the 50-sided, this polygonal bloody thing. I don't know. They sell everything. It's great. Um, you can do kinds of things with these. Uh, I don't recommend you use the floor normally, but these won't fit on any table that we have in here. I'm not sit on the floor kind of teacher. Right. I'm not marrying you, really. Um, you could. You could. Four of these, but still. Yeah, you could uh, do timelines and things. Um, I won't do the full grammatical timeline with you because we haven't really got time. <laughs> uh, but you can actually teach all the tenses of English using quaternaries in one lesson, contrasted with, with a higher level group. Some of them with a lower level group. This could just be my lifeline from, you know, birth to now. Maybe it's a death. Now. Um, yeah, because... Because uh, I was born in um, Nottingham, which is Midlands, in the centre of England, really. Nottingham's only famous, really, for Robin Hood and Sherwood Forest. Sherwood Forest, which is where I was born. <laughs> Me. I mean, not born in the forest itself, you know, under a tree, but in, um, in a nursing home, uh, a maternity hospital, or whatever, in the forest. It's great. In fact, I was actually born within an arrow's flight of where Robin fell. Mm. Yeah. The tree that you can hide in, the tree that he hid in with all his merry men, apparently, is very nearby. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'm a reincarnation of Robin Hood. Except I've got it the wrong way around. <laughs> Dealing from the point to get to the red. Um, anyway, yeah. Robin Hood, Sherwood Forest. That's where I was born. Um, and um, me, mum, and uh, my dad. My dad was a travelling salesman, so um, uh, as a child, they grew up and see him very often. He was always off driving around, travelling. So, uh, his car, travelling salesman. And then um, when I was about uh, ten. We moved to Yorkshire in the north of England. In north of England, and we went, I went to a school in um, Wakefield, which is a hot. I'll do my double sound script. Is it more comfortable? Mm -hmm. I know it looks dreadful, but it's just easy. <laughs> Wakefield is a near Leeds, uh, places like that. It's a bit. It's not even a decent city, though. It's a, it's a pathetic little place. I went to a grammar school in, in uh, Wakefield. Dirty, black, horrible thing. So Victorian, quite strict. Uh, this is me as a small child at school. And, um, this is the other children at the school. Oh. Oh. We were all minus kids, you know. But you had to be quite inte reasonably intelligent to go to the school because you had to pass an exam. But basically, you could be anybody from a kid of a managing director to the kid of a coal miner or an unemployed uh, coal miner. So the big coal miner kids used to sort of uh, beat me up, this is, this is the blood that used to run every day. <laughs> and um, I suppose it was then that I tried to develop a sort of sense of humour <laughs> to deal with it. Anyway, over those years, I, I worked very hard and I won a, uh, actually won a scholarship to the university. So um, this is my university. This is pink for the university. Quite pink. Uh, this is Oxford University. The dreaming spines of Oxford. They are dreaming spines. Uh, the river, of course. The river Thames. Uh, and the river Charwell, which runs through Oxford. We've never been to the town, but you know, people do go on little punts on the river. Things 
it looks a bit childish actually with these big ones, but it's okay with the small ones. You can just build up a little story and um, <coughs> make sure that this isn't rather longer, put in a few more details. The thing is, these just represent facts, and then they try to retell your story using these as an aid memoir. But you can also you do reported speech, of course. Mm. Well, you told us that you were born in uh, Nottingham, which is only famous for Robin Hood and Shirley Forrest, and uh, your dad was a travelling salesman, so he was often away. And then when you were, uh, is, is this right? When you were 10, you moved to somewhere in the north of England, I've forgotten. You see how the grammar's kind of coming in here of present perfect and reporting speech and so on. Wakefield. Oh, yeah, Wakefield, that's right. It was near another place. Leeds. Oh, that's right, yeah. Leeds. And you didn't like school because uh, it was a bit hard, your school life. Yes. Uh, but then you won a scholarship to university. Yeah, right. And uh, so on. And of course, you can do this for career. You can do it for the history of a company, uh, companies it took over. I mean, bar charts and graphs are quite easy to do with an error. There is a graph. Or if you want a line graph, that's just destroy my life. If you want a line graph, you just do a line graph. The great thing about these is because people say, oh, but Mark, you can just do this on the board. You don't need these bricks. True. But with this, you can change it really fast. Do that one. 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 And that's why it's called silent way. Not that the teacher's necessarily silent, but they don't need to say very much. They can often just move and manipulate things and learn the response. <coughs> It's hard touch. It's very high touch, yeah. Mm -hmm. These are more subtle, and I don't suggest that you use this size in one to one. I only bought these for a laugh, because God knows life's short. Mm -hmm.